Hola amigos, hola amigas, Dorian here from Hoovalux. Welcome, bienvenido, crossui, salam alaikum. Welcome to the channel, y'all. So I haven't done an unboxing for a while and this is a very special unboxing for me because this box has come all the way from Australia. So my mum and dad, my um, in-laws, call them mum and dad, my mum and dad and my sister Crystal sent this over for me for my birthday. My dad um, had picked up these items on eBay, so he's got about six or seven vacuums that he's picked up in Australia for me to bring back. And for my birthday, they wanted to send over two um, for me. So um, it's taken a while because they came over by slow boat, so it's taken a couple of months. My birthday was back in March. And to send stuff from Australia, even like this, this is really expensive. This would have cost, um, I think there's a cost on there. It cost, oh, there we go. It cost $140.08 um, from Australia. So that's quite expensive for postage. You'd have to do the working out. I'm not really sure how what's the um, equivalent at the moment for uh, the Australian dollar. But it did cost a lot. And so it's finally arrived on Thursday. So I was very eager to get the box open. It's now Sunday. I'm about to leave it there sitting in the living room for a few days so that I had a chance to actually get this um, opened. So I'm just going to remove my address. There we go. So that has now been done. And I'm not entirely sure what the box contains. Um, it's got your two vacuum cleaners. So I have no idea which ones that he has sent over. I know the the machines that he does have because he sent me the information on Australian eBay and yeah, that's fine. So I know what the vacuums are. I just don't know what he has sent. I'm hoping one of them is a Hoover model, but uh, I have no idea. It's all a big surprise. So, okay, let's stop waffling. Waffling? Waffling. And let's get this open. So it says this is the top. Uh, and it's very well taped up. <laughs> very well taped up. So I am just trying to see how I can do this the best way. So when I go over to Australia, I have a number of machines that I'll be sending back via the same way, via this um, slow post. Very protected. Thank you very much, Dad, Mum, and Dad, and Crystal. Let's take off some of this packaging. It's like peeling an onion. Two pieces of cardboard removed. Next, uh, let's try this. Okay, this appears to be some sort of like lid. Let's take that off. Ooh, there's a bit of colour. I can see a bit of colour of one of the machines. Right. This way up. Okay. So, we have some polystyrene. Packaging. Oh my gosh, right. Let's get 
get rid of this. Oh, the blade has come off. Where's the blade gone? I've lost a blade somewhere. Hang on. Let's use this. Okay, now, aha, I can see what these are. So, let's take out a polishing pad. I can see what it is now because I'm looking inside. So we know that one of them is, it's a polisher, it's a Hoover polisher. And I think that must be the bumper. We've got a handle and another handle. Some more polystyrene. And another polishing pad. More polystyrene. And uh, I can just grab it. We have uh, a very long hose. That is long hose. Installation. I'll just take out this washer and a very large, that's not part of it. Make sure there's nothing else. No, no more screws. No, that's it. Excellent. To vacuum up the mess. So we have been sent a Hoover Constellation. Now, this does have a break here on the handle. That's not a problem. We've got some Australian plugs. And this looks like it is the hose for this. Excellent. It doesn't have any attachments, but I've got stacks of them anyway, so that's no problem at all. And we have this Hoover polisher. Wow, that is really cool. That is really, really cool. Now, That is a washer. That is a pad. That screw has come off. So I can screw that back on. And there we go, we have a polisher with its bumper. Now I've never, I've seen one of these, but I've never actually seen one in the flesh so there is a how do you remove oh they just cut it off oh, i think this one is ah, there we go so this is the hoover model 5134d electric polisher serial number 42559 240 volts, 155 watts, made by Hoover Australia Meadow Bank in Sydney. So Meadow Bank in Sydney is where these Hoovers were made in America, sorry, in Australia, sorry. Protected by patents, registered designs and trademark. And it is in this lovely orangey color. That is so cool. On the back of it there, uh, how does one release it? Oh, that is the release okay so I assume then there is no on and off switch for it I wonder how the on and off I wonder how it switches on and off is it a matter of as soon as you plug it in it comes on 
There's no switch on the handle. That just looks like a standard handle. Maybe that could be the switch at the back. That could be the handle release and the on and off button for it. It could be, but it's in working condition. Unfortunately, the, the cord is not bro is not working on it. But I've got a spare cord that I will put on there. And of course, here we have the bumper that attaches on it somehow. But I will sort that out once I've given it a good clean because it's a bit manky. So that's a quick look at the polisher. Next we have here, which is the Constellation. Now, let's move that out of the way. This does look very American in design. This has got an on and off switch here. It's a very robust one. It's actually like a foot pedal one. That is really good. That is a lot more sturdier. I like that a lot. Release is just the same. Aha! He's put some bits on the inside for me. <laughs> now, this is a floor polishing tool, or like a floor dusting tool. We've got two other tools. A dusting brush, which has got like a, a red gingery <laughs> color to it. And the upholstery brush, which is actually in really good condition. And then my dad also has put inside, which is really handy. I didn't know he was going to do this. This is actually an Electrolux floor tool. It's one of the swivel ones. Now, one of my Electroluxes that I have, the floor tool was actually broken on it. So I can use this. This looks like a straight suction. Um, there's no adjustment on it or anything. And then on this side, then, there's some bristles that you turn over for doing that. But that is in fully working operation. So I can use that perfectly with my Electrolux vacuum cleaner that I got over there that I need to do. So I'm going to put this to one side. Whoops, for another video. Uh, we have a very, we have a pen top, everybody. There's a pen top inside there and a very, very bad bag. This looks like it was originally a genuine bag, but rather than just going out to get a new bag, they taped it up. So I don't know whether my dad did that, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, we're not going to use this because this has just gone too bad. So I'll pop that in the bin, unfortunately. Let's give it a vacuum. Okay, so there we go. I've got the cord off. What I'm going to do now is move you guys closer. Uh, get hold of the adapter for it. And I'm going to remove this broken handle here. Because I'm going to use the one off, the one I have there, the spare one. So I'm going to take the handle off this and put a new handle on it. It's a dent on the side as well. I love the colour. I really, really do love the colour. And that foot pedal, so these, this is definitely, it's got to be the American design. It's got to be. It has got a spring thing on it for holding on the filter over, over the motor. 
Um, that is different to our one, that's an actual spring. So actually putting this over it to hold the cloth into place would be a lot easier than the ones that um, I have, which are just one wire. That can be a bit awkward. That looks really good. Anyway. So, let's get looking at this a bit closer. So there we go. I have got you closer. I have put down a towel and I have got my bucket of warm soapy water. I have also taken off the handle of the other constellation that I have. This also has a broken end, but I will be using some Sugru to fix this and then use this one then for that one and I'll try and repair it a bit more somehow. Anyway, first thing I want to do is to test it. So this is the plug that it's come with, which is the Australian plug. And what I want to do is to change it so it has a fuse in it. So I am going to put a British plug on it simply because this is old. I can see the wires through the bottom there and I want it fused for safety reasons. So I'm going to put a new plug on first of all and then we'll give it a demo. Okay, so I've taken the uh, old plug off it. I have now put on a new 13 amp fused plug. And I think it's off or on, I can't really tell. Okay, let's plug it in. Okay, it's off. Uh, let's um, let's uh, let's switch it on. Oh. oh wow, that motor sounds really good. Maybe just a little bit dry on the bearings, but it does sound really good, so... Um... Okay, that does sound a bit drier. Uh, let's move it just off this towel to see how it works on this. Yep. That foot pedal is really good. Wow, okay, let me unplug it. Now, let's take a look at, there we go, there's the labels underneath here. So this is the Hoover Cleaner model 864E, protected by patents, registered designs and trademarks in Australia and the principal countries of the world. Do not earth, double insulated, ACDC motor, 225 to 250 volts, 0 to 60 cycles, 680 watts, serial number 232366, so that could be 62 or 66, I don't know, made at Meadowbank in Sydney, Hoover Australia PTY, so that's where, that's both of them were made in the same factory. The paint underneath here is chipped off a bit. So what I think I'll do is I'll rub this down and just rub the, the rest of the paint off this. Uh, I'm not going to be repainting it. So it has there its exit port for blowing. And apart from a little damage to it, a little bit, it's, it's not in that bad a condition. Now I've got it unplugged, yes. First thing I need to do is to clean this rubber bumper so that comes off pretty easy around the edge the only issue I will have will be T 
taking it off from here. So I think I should be able to. Yeah, pull this out. Like so. And then that's the top off. And that's the pin. So now I can completely move the rubber bumper for cleaning. And I'm not going to wash the top, I'm just going to wipe it over and then machine polish it. So I'm going to take this handle off. Which is two flat bladed screws. Just like the other one. for me to do the cleaning on it. Now we're gonna look at this. Again, there are four screws holding down the top. there four screws off now before I remove this lid I am going to reposition you guys directly over it so we can both have a look and see what's uh, what's it like on the inside okay so now you've got a better view let's take off the lid and take a look inside well there we go not much to see the motor just sits on here there is its where it comes in, the power comes in. That's the lovely foot switch. It's dusty, I will say that. It is very dusty. And what I would like to do is to simply, to remove the motor is very easy. It just pops out like so. And what I'd like to do is to blast out the motor with a my compressor lubricate the bearings on it and then give it a quick going over so there is also a very dusty compressor and a compre suppressor there's a very dusty suppressor i can see there so right That goes via the switch, that goes into the compressor, that goes through there. Let's take off this screw. That's the cover there. Okay, so the red goes that side. screw this back in
that side. Shit, I'll get that later. So there's the motor. Definitely needs some spraying out. It's very, very dusty. And what I need to do is Oh no, that's just come out. No, oh, this has just come out of the bloody suppressor. That wire there has just come out from the suppressor. So the motor came out very easy. So I'm gonna have to try and work out how the heck to remove that suppressor and that is the flap at the bottom. Right. Let's get the vacuum cleaner on this. There we go. Now, how does one bypass this suppressor? I'm gonna have to re-clip these on because these are falling apart. I want to remove the suppressor, most definitely. So there's a screw down here at the side. actually not that that is wired on clip this right okay I guess if I want to bypass the suppressor, that to that, if I snip off this wire here with my little snippers, yeah, and that's the red one. And then that's the black one. Shoot. I'll just remove the suppressor. Right, first things first, let me get this motor blasted out. So there we go, I've given the motor a really good blast out. <clears throat> what I want to do now is move my bits up the way. Pop down my towel. Bucket. And some cloths. And the first thing I'm going to do is give this motor a wipe over. To get rid of any residual dust off it. Quite a chunky motor actually. I guess these had to be kind of powerful for their age because they're kind of heavy so they have to stay off the floor all 
Okay. Let's give this a wipe over. I think it's been standing in summer with a lot of um, damp because um, shit, it's a bit rusty, but it's not causing huge problems. Just give this a wipe over. I'm not going to be stripping down this motor to bare bones because I'm just not. So what I'm going to do is clean it up, lubricate it. I've removed that suppressor off it and then put it back together with a bit of lubrication. Okay, that'll do. Now, pop my bucket on that. This is the actual inside of it, which needs a vacuum. do now is give the inside of this <coughs> a wipe over and also the underneath uh, where did I put that dry pad I just said this is a scouring pad over what I'm gonna do I got some wire wool some of that very very fine wire wool and I'll use that at the bottom to remove the rust so the cloths are just slightly damp unit, the base of it. Okay, now that looks a lot better. I'm not being ex very, very fussy with the inside of this because it's mainly the outside that I want to polish and take care of. I'm just going to use another cloth just 
for any residual liquid. in another cloth ready because I want to clean the inside of this seal this rubber grommet it almost looks like a diaphragm where it belongs in that position and this is the top seal of the motor I'm just giving that a wipe over there we go So here is the motor now, and what I want to do I don't want to be taking out the um, I'm going to be doing this a quick way. I, I t you know, I really should take out the two screws on the other side and remove the um, carbon brushes. Once I've removed the carbon brushes, I will be able to then, I could take off this, remove this, remove the fan, remove the armature, and really get into the bearings. But unfortunately, I just don't have the know-how to do that. So... Um, what to do, what to do, what to do I just don't know what to do with this machine I just don't know what to do with this machine Do not lubricate, it says, that's fine, I won't lubricate in there I would only get it inside a little bit. Right. Just trying to look underneath this. Okay, 
see if that works. No, I need to lay the motor in. And this has a special spot. one way that goes in and that has a special spot in there that shows where the motor will sit right. so what I'm going to do is with this black and red wire, I am going to put on these crimp terminals. But I'll be using the crimp terminals that go in and out. So you can plug them and unplug them. So I can put these crimps on here. And then once I got the motor in place, then I'll be able to just connect them together. So I'm not gonna show that. I'm going to do that off camera. Two, three that I have to do it to. One, two. That's connected up to there. It's there. There's the red one. And then that's the black one that connects up to that one. And then that goes down to the inside where I have to connect these two together. So I might. Oh, sugar. Put that back. With these two, I might just use the crimpers and put them together. Or shall I use? No, I will. I will use the separator thing. It'll make it easier. Right. Okay. Let me get this sorted, and I'll come back to you once I got these crimps on. Okay. I've done all my crimping. So now I'm gonna pop. The motor back in. Like so. I'm gonna have to turn this around, I can't see. Just connecting up these two red wires there. And now the black wire connecting up there. Now this will go back into... That's actually half hanging off. hanging off that ring so I'm going to remove it put a crimp on it Screw it back in. Oh, you little shit. God, these screws are all good. 
They're just like on the Hoover Junior. Get in, you little monkey. Next, put this one back on. Do you know what this one again is half hanging off? <clears throat> so I'm going to do the same. Just gonna put this switch cover back in place, which is quite awkward. I can see the hole quite clearly. There we go. So that is now in. Excellent. Now I have to give the inside of this a wipe over with this cloth. Back on. Take the four screws. Screw the lid back on.
Okay, there we go. So we got the screws back on it. We have got it into position. Ah, next thing is to switch it on. See if it works. Okay, stand back. Still a bit dry it's not as bad as it was i have to admit it really does need the motor completely taken um, out of it and then um, servicing the entire motor and cleaning it up but it's not too bad <laughs> So we've got that far, excellent. So let's just so I've unplugged it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get some uh, wire wool and I'm just going to rub this over. So let me just do that. That's the old suppressor gone. So I've got me a little piece of wire wool and I'm just going to work my way around this to remove some of the rust. I'm not going to be respraying this or repainting it. I want to keep it as much as original as possible. I just want to clean it up. This is not a full refurb video. This is just to stop it from scratching my wooden floors. When I go around with the um, polishing machine on it, the um, polishy cutting machine, um, it will help as well. That looks so much better than before. Now, dry it off. Goodbye, why will. Next thing I'm going to do is give the inside of this a clean over. These are really nice machines to work on. The first time I'd seen uh, somebody working on this on a machine like this or is Sam. Um, and when he took his apart, I was like, oh, okay, it's not it's not as complicated as, as I first thought. I was planning to do the other two pink ones that I have there. <coughs> I have all the parts for them. I just haven't gotten around to do them yet. But they will get done eventually. And this channel hopefully will last a long time. And if you're a loyal subscriber, you will get to see it. I can't. It's a shame. It's sort of like I want to get everything done quickly, but I just physically can't. Right, so that's that for now. Looking good. Looking good. Okay, next thing I need to work on now is this. 
<clears throat> so for this I have got a little bit of sif and a sponge. I'm just going to put a little bit of chiff on this. Just remove as much of the dirt off it. Dents and scratches and everything on it. Love it. The patina, as they call it. Patina, darling. Patina and Max. Let's wipe that off. If this could tell a tale. I can't remember where my dad picked it up from in Australia. I know that uh, he and mum had to go, <laughs> they decided to make a day of it. It was literally like a whole day out, picking up the machines. So I'm not sure if it was this one or not, but it was in a, some humpy in the middle of nowhere. Love it. I love the goldy color as well of the logo here, you can see. Side a wipe over. Like the rubber seal. This does kind of remind me of kind of more of the Australian design, <laughs> design as in, in colour. Um, American, sorry Jesus, let me try again. This design colour reminds me of the ones I saw in America at Doug Yaple's store. Now I'm going to give it one more. Jiffing. A little bit of jiff. Go. Nice bit of jiff. Looking nice. Ready when I give it the machine polish, it'll give it a lovely, lovely shine. It'll still have its war wounds, but it will look really nice. Just one more wipe on the inside. 
side. Quick dry. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to do the um, the bumper. I'm going to do it in the sink in the kitchen because it'll make it a lot easier for me to do it. Now it's got a kind of a bit of a dull finish to it at the moment because uh, paint really really needs cleaning on it so that's what it looks like at the moment so what I'm going to do off camera is I'm going to do exactly the same as what I did with the GIF but I'm going to do it to the bottom part here I'm going to GIF that so when I come back this will have been GIF'd and the bumper which is here will be nice and clean as well so there we go, I have that bumper looking a lot better than what it did earlier on. Now I'm going to attach it to the top. Goes over these. Like so. There. And just wiggle it around into place. Now that looks much, much better than what it did before. Now I need to reattach it. Tap it back into place, and there we go, fantastic. Looking so much better. Let me just try it again. looking very good next thing I'm going to do now is the polishing so let me unplug it get all my polishing stuff together and then we're going to give this a blowing good polishing okay so I got my polishing stuff ready what I'm going to do is I'm going to polish this with you guys on fast forward Okay, that is everything polished. It's been left to dry. So now I'm just going to wipe it. And I don't know if you can see, but I can certainly see, the shine on this is beautiful. It's covered in scratches and bits missing of the paintwork, but it is got a really beautiful shine on it now let's work on this the bottom bit seems to be more matte uh, than the top it's almost a two-tone gold which is what I guess it is but the bottom this bottom ring here always seems to stay in better condition than the top for obvious reasons so I'm just wiping 
this beautiful polishing compound off it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some wax on it, especially on the top and the bumper. Put a bag on it, put its filter in it, got a filter for it, and we will be done. So I will be back when I'm ready to wipe off the wax. We're almost at the end of this uh, vacuum, which is part one, the Australian vacuums. So what I'm gonna do now is wipe the wax off. Wax on, wax off. With my lovely plush car towels. And that looks fantastic. I will have to show my dad the before pictures and the after pictures. Hubby Lux can send him a picture later. There we go. So, open it up. What I'm gonna do now is put a filter on it that I got. Uh, tuck it around that side, it's a bit awkward. Now I'm going to put the loop and the spring on. There we go. That's the filter on. The Gilligan. And I'm gonna pop an air freshener in there. And these are the bags that I got from America. These are the Hoover X White Arm and Hammer bags. They're not quite the same, but they will fit into it per perfectly. There we go. The bag is in place. Fingers crossed, that should inflate. It should inflate well anyway. I'll leave it in and I'll keep checking it. Slide it in. Come on, bag. There we go. I'm just wondering, it's not going to. I might have to help it a bit actually. Open it up a bit. There we go. That should be fine. And the last thing I have to do now is to put the handle on it. Start the screw off either end. Yeah, that should be right. There we go. Uh, got my flat screwdriver. There we go. So that's the handle on. Now let's close it up. Break the seal on the inside. And switch it on. Oh, plug it in. Hey <laughs> hey. 
switch it on. Let me remove the towel. Try it now. There we go. And that definitely floats a lot better than what it did and it definitely looks a lot better as you can see now to give it a quick demo on the floor I'm just gonna put some mad about mess on there I have borrowed the um, hose from my other one upstairs my other constellation because these parts here the accessories for it these are all gonna need to be cleaned so I'm gonna try uh, Sam's method of putting them in a cloth bag in the washing machine with the rags so what I'm gonna do now is just set this up on the floor very quickly on the other side of the bench and just pick up some bits and let's see how it goes okay so I've just sprinkled a little bit of mad about mess which is some sawdust and some rice particles and uh, let's give it a go
So there we go. That's my little bit of Australia here in the UK cleaning up the mess. It's done a very, very good job. I love it. Absolutely love it. It's nice to see the kind of like the American design on an Australian made vacuum cleaner. It's a bit unusual, but really, really nice. So let's get this back up on the bench and finish off the video. So there we go, my little whippersnappers. We are back on the bench. I just have to, I can't resist. <laughs> oh, didn't sound healthy then. Uh, okay, so we've done a test on it. We've got it cleaned up. We've got it looking good. This is part one of the Australian vacuums. The part two, which will be the next, which will be the floor polisher. And then we will give them a house demo. Um, I will speak to somebody to see if they have a replacement handle for this without the, without the broken part. I will try and repair the other one and uh, see how it goes. Uh, but all in all not a problem at all I absolutely love it let me get a clip for it by hook or by crook I can't get the um, cable hook on for the Dyson one so I will just have to leave it like so and just secure it on like that there we go let's see okay so there we go that is the Hoover Constellation from Australia done and dusted I will do another house demo with it um, once I've got the original hose all cleaned up. I just wanted to confirm with you guys. Uh, this is the model 864A made in Australia with an American design. So, like I said, please comment, like and subscribe for more videos. Please stay tuned for part two, uh, which will be up in a few days. And we will be working on that old Hoover polisher. Thank you very much and I'll see you soon. Bye.